Welcome to this Surfray sponsored webinar on building search based applications in SharePoint 2010. It's an exciting topic, and I think it's a good transitional topic to the capabilities that we're going to see when um, people start to use SharePoint 2013. But those with SharePoint 2010, there's still a lot that you can do. So, my name is Robert Pedock. I've probably um, seen or met many of you before, either at SharePoint conferences or here on these webinars. I have helped write two books on SharePoint Search so far, first Pro SharePoint 2010 Search, and then working with Microsoft Fast, which has now been folded into SharePoint 2013. So um, fun projects, great books. If you want to know more about Search, please do check them out. I can be reached at any of these items here, so feel free to reach out to me if you have more questions about the content that we see here today. Just a word about the structure. This is uh, kind of a half business, half technical uh, show I've got for you today. I'm going to talk a little bit about what search-based applications are and what we can do with them. And then I'm actually going to show you how I built a very simple one in um, SharePoint in about half a day. Yeah, let's get started. So what is a search-based application? This is actually a very good thing to clarify because uh, search vendors and people will talk about these things and uh, talk about how wonderful they are without really understanding or letting you understand what they do. But basically, search-based application is just a way to deliver information using the search engine as a core en engine. So a lot of times you'll have uh, libraries and lists that show uh, certain types of information, and that information is stored in that library or list and then pulled in from SQL where that those or from a you know, remote blob storage or something where those documents are actually stored. And those documents actually are only shown because they live in that, uh, that space. Search can actually find uh, documents in many, many different places and then bring them together using query parameters. And those are query parameters like keywords and property searches and other kinds of, of complex queries to bring a slice of information back to the specific user based on some business need. And that can be extremely powerful. Um, my analogy here is that instead of letting users use search to go and find the needle, you can actually take a selection of specific needles and show them to them. So that is really, really powerful. And I think it's really in its most powerful um, form when you keep it as simple and user focused as possible. So you can leverage things like properties, uh, the dates of documents, you can do sorting, and you can show uh, contextual information about searches. Some search-based applications can be extremely complicated. So we'll have an advanced search box with parametric search, and then a very complicated search result that people get. And this is really closer to actually just having a, you know, exposing a parametric search for users. But I think sometimes that is a little bit over overkill. There are applications where you can use that. Uh, what I want to show you today is really the simplest version of a search-based application. So um, search-based applications in SharePoint, of course, are a little bit limited. They're not as powerful as some of the enterprise search vendors can build because, of course, they're using a completely open tool. But you can do quite a lot with SharePoint. And, and if you look at your business needs, you can, you can see where search-based applications are really going to give value. And you can actually just use the search pieces that come out of SharePoint and um, deliver that information. Now that takes me to my second part of the, the, or that will take me to my second part of this webinar, which is actually showing you a demonstration of how to make a simple search-based application using the out-of-the-box uh, search web parts in, in SharePoint. So um, search-based applications in SharePoint can also be an alternative to content migration. I meet people all the time who are like, we have this file share with 100,000 documents on it, and we, we need just some of those documents, but we're not sure which ones. So we've got to put them all into SharePoint, and that's a huge problem, and you're going to spend money on um, migration tools and a lot of time to put that stuff in SharePoint. Plus, you also have to scale out your servers because now you need to store all of that stuff in SharePoint as well as on the file server or, you know, instead of the file server. So uh, search-based application can actually be a nice alternative to this because I can index that file share and then pick and choose the documents I want and push them out to the users. And I'll show you an example of that. Of course, I mentioned SharePoint 2013, and that is the future 
of um, search-based applications because the content and publishing model in SharePoint 2013 is based on search. So when you're looking at a list or a library in SharePoint 2013, it's generated through search. So this is really the future. So it's, uh, it's great that we can do it in 2010 as well. A nice, another nice thing about search-based applications in SharePoint is that you can show documents somewhere without actually having to move them. So a lot of people may say, well, I'm on this particular site collection and I would like to see this kind of document, but it lives in another site collection. So do I have to move them over and make a copy of them? No, you just can show them with your search-based application by calling them out of search as long as they're, they're indexed. And uh, really the big win for this is that we can produce information, snapshots of information for users where they need it. And we'll get to that as well. One last thing before I jump into a demo I would like to talk about, and this is a really important part of the discussion, is what makes a good search-based application. I've seen a lot of search-based applications. I've seen a lot of uh, very complicated scenarios where um, information is trying to be delivered to users, um, many times not in very good consideration of what the users need, but more of what management would like to see. Um, so I think this is an important topic to talk about. One thing that's important about search-based application is that it's automatic. A user should not know that they have just performed a search. The search-based application should deliver the information in the context of where they are and what they're doing. Search-based applications should not look like search. Um, of course, you could then have users go from your search-based application to search if you want them, if you want to give them more options. But generally, they should not be confused by all the parameters of search. It should just be information delivered and actionable in the context that they're in. It must meet business demands. So many people are building things because they, they think that it's going to be good for their users, but really what you need to do is address what those users are doing in the specific uh, circumstance, like a specific use case of how they're using. So a good example of this is that I am a company and I need to deal with documents about different customers. So or I'm an information worker in a company and I have to deal with uh, invoices and work orders to make sure that those two items line up. So I can either go into SharePoint and search for all of the invoices and then search for all of the work orders, download them, and then try to compare them. Or I can get a page where I see side by side all of the invoices and all of the work orders and then I can do my comparison there. And this is a you know, very simple but a specific kind of use case that you need to surface and then build the application out. And a lot of people are like, wow, I'm not going to build an application for one user who may, you know, may save them 20 minutes, just let them do their job. But these are not really that complicated to use or to build. And if you do it, you can actually save a lot of time and improve a lot of uh, efficiency in the, um, in the organization. Of course, the information needs to be delivered to the right place at the right time. Just having information pushed to people with no particular context is not a great idea as well. And the search-based app application needs to be able to reduce the lost effect. And this lost effect is the effect where users are working in SharePoint and then they get lost and they have to revert to search to find a document that they need to keep moving forward. And we want to reduce that and lead them with like a breadcrumb along to the different information that they need. Of course, reducing clicks is always important, and that should really be a main consideration for everyone who's working in a web-based model. People don't like to click. The less clicks you have, the less page refreshes we have, the more time we have to actually work on things instead of sitting waiting. Also, if you have to keep clicking and waiting for things to load, downloading things, then you're gonna get distracted. And when people get distracted, they move on to do something else, and that may not be productive for the organization. So these are key important points. So let's look at our my demo now. It's actually going to be a little bit technical, but I, don't be um, overwhelmed by it uh, because I'll provide you with the code that I use, and uh, anybody should be able to step through these steps and do it. So uh, what I want to do here is I want to bring some specific information to uh, information worker about 
a single one of